next, 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 I was led to, as I went through the alphabet, and this is what I'm encouraging you to do, I'm giving you a practical way in, and I have a, the adoration through the ABCs, and these are the faces of God that I met, and you get it to memorize it, and you go anywhere every day, and you can go through the alphabet, and it'll land on a face of God for you, and you don't have to feel that distance, or like you got to go in the figure it out room, or the alarm room, or the pain room. You land on the God of Delight. You just go on your own journey in the midst of your day, and you'll see it through that filter of God. And that's what is to change in this hour across the earth is that the greatest thing that's ever going to come forth in the kingdom is John 4 23, those who know him in spirit and truth. And they're not going to be moved by the political situations, etc., because they're going to be always have a greater reality that they magnify the Lord over their souls and their souls have been delivered from fear, their perfect peace, their faces are radiant and they inherit the land. This is a golden key to everything and this is what we're to do is we've been taught principles but we can't learn our way into a relationship and encounter. We love our way into it. It's a real relationship, and we don't know our love language. And so this word will work for everybody. So I went through the bountiful God, beautiful God, etc., comforter, counselor, deity, delightful God, Father, friend, gracious, heavenly, holy, hopeful God. And I felt like the second face of God I was to encounter and to see was a hopeful God because when I had come to this place of peace well now I didn't have to worry and fight for survival like a packed up rodent but now I was lifted above the issues of the day and I could see a far ways out according to his goodness and I got a little bit set in a different place and even those that I was around it was this ones that I loved had settled in that place of seeing God in the first chamber the God of redemption the God of forgiveness the God of love and that is awesome in the first chamber in the song of Solomon it talks about that that he, the love so overwhelms you that the Shulamite woman, the one who was being loved, said, put your hand behind my neck, I'm going to pass out, feed me with raisin cakes. But then it's not to stop there. Love secures a heart, but hope advances a heart. And in this life, we were to receive a hundred times more. I read that, and I read about the hopes in the land of the living, and there was like 27 of them, but when I heard the preachers preach it was no that was for the millennium or they're put off to another time and I had discovered this forgotten face of God Bob Jones said it had been buried for 6,000 years and I was to discover it now there's word and was the God of hope because love secures your heart hope advances your heart and I'd met some that had not given into the fear and the limitations of the reality of be in a cloister church, but they saw God as a God of all of life, and they couldn't see that without seeing the God of hope, or they were already afraid of a world that was afraid, and that just is silly to be afraid of a world that's afraid, it was, this is our kingdom, our Father's kingdom, and so I began to hope in Him, and love Him more than I love myself, loved Him and His ways, and I loved the way he advanced without fear. And I realized that he, his pursuit of me was greater than my pursuit of him. His pursuit of my inheritance was greater than mine. And I went from the experience I had, I will tell in a moment, but just 
I went into this wondrous place where I was like Luke 15. I met the, uh, like the prodigal son. I met the father who wanted to give me everything. And that I could hope in God. I could hope in people that I looked with God's eyes and I wasn't fearful towards people. And we tend to hate that which we fear or don't understand. And it's different cultures, different ideas at many times versus seeing every kindred, tribe, and tongue will love him together. And so I started hoping people, I started hoping the next generation, but they were generation X, Y, Z, or generation lazy, but they're generation hope, and that they're going to be fully grown plants and pillars and palaces, and that, that just the word of God about who are children were to be if we hoped in that and if we didn't set the children's teeth on edge and this hope started to fill my soul this indomitable hope where I saw the God of hope and he gave me this journey with him and hope just means confident in the goodness of God and the land of living is what he, I, I, I saw in John 11 where he said to Martha I'm not the resurrection in life in the age to come, but now, 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 hope in me, advance in me, legacy in family, legacy in wealth, legacy in kindness, legacy in so many areas, children, and if it doesn't look perfect right now, well, we don't live by what we see on the outside, really, we live by what we see on the inside, and I, so I started to be able not to preach to you this, but be able to look at my future and hope, and not only hope, that it, you know, it was his gift to me, that I had a golden chariot of purpose, as it says in Song of Solomon 6, and I could advance, and I just didn't have to be a, a little child that sat on his lap in love, but that I could walk with him, and I could co-labor with him, and we could build, and it just gave me my life back, and it gave me my advancement back. The God of hope exploded where he showed me him. I had asked him about all the evil on the earth, and he said, he showed me him as high as the sky, laughing and celebrating. Then this microcosm died of evil. All the evil, all the ages, despots, and it was a dot compared to this whole landscape horizon filled with him laughing and celebrating for eternity with his white robe and he was spinning as Zephaniah 3, 16, 17 where he's a God that rejoices over us, spins and dances and it, it even gets better as you read it about his hope for the day and his victory and I had said, what about the evil and it, this microcosm of darkness died and comes in and it exploded and he says, that's all of evil, all mankind, all the ages compared to my great goodness. So are you going to magnify me, the God of hope, or are you going to magnify misery? And he's down. And he said, uh, so I got exploded into hope that would have to take some different tests to go to mature hope and indomitable hope but that's the second place that I went and life became, started to become so fun and a celebration and so I ask you to evaluate that because there's, there's this progressive journey for each one of us peace gets a hold of us and then we can even step into the door of hope and that's what happened to me on my journey. Started businesses, went out, helped her on a Senate campaign, taught at a university, secular university, where they made fun of me. And I enjoyed it because I knew I'd get them. And I could go on in all these different arenas of life and different nations that I went. Because all the life was his. And hope changes your and we go from this miserable eschatology that says sacrifice and die, and all the earth is going to be evil. Well, it's nowhere near what the balance of the scripture says to where we are, this kingdom that's going to grow with our Father. 
Psalms and Isaiah 9 says, ever increasing. So consider this for your next step in your journey of devotion with Him. To magnify Him as the God of hope and see your productivity increase, see your ability to manage daily life, marketplace situations, families, challenges in a whole different way. So you grow in hope through adoration. You will always not work workers because hope, the true hope, is the ultimate love, expression of love. Because love in 1 Corinthians 13, and it's mature as highest place, hopes all things, sees original design, and isn't overwhelmed by original sin. It doesn't magnify the enemy's ability to deceive, but God's ability to lead. Bless you.